blood of Jesus Christ upon ourselves. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon tonight's meeting. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon everything about this meeting, Lord. We submit ourselves to you by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As you're clear, you, Lord, be the potter. Holy Spirit, be the potter. This is another opportunity in your presence for you to mold us into who you want us to be open our eyes to see enlighten the eyes of our understanding let your spirit of wisdom and revelation function greatly tonight let there be no distractions let there be no paradigms that exalt itself against the knowledge of christ let your wisdom and your knowledge come expressly transforming our lives impacting our lives all to the glory of your name lord in the name of jesus christ amen and amen good evening everyone Oh, hallelujah. Tonight, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 2, and um, we're going to do a Bible study discussion. So, um, I'll read Hebrews chapter 2 in two translations, and then we discuss it, and we see what it is in this scripture that the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal to us especially now in this time. The idea is for us to be strong and equipped and to function in the full capacity of who God destined us to be and to function in. That's the whole design. So we'll read Hebrews chapter 2, starting from the King James Version. And remember, as is our custom, as we are reading, trust the Holy Spirit for revelation and insight. As he gives the revelation and insight, the moment the reading has been concluded, you can always unmute yourself and share the revelation and insight that God has given to you while the scripture was being read. Also, if you have any questions, you can always unmute yourself and ask your questions in order to get better clarity so that we can all be edified. So Hebrews chapter 2, King James Version from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing the witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visited him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For this, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church, will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my thrust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, 
he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through that he might destroy him that had the power of that, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is also able to succor them that are tempted. I'm going to read this in another translation so that we can um, get the import of what the scripture is saying. And I picked up um, one of the translations that I think did a good job of it, and that is the Good News translation. So I start reading from verse 1. I believe that when I read this translation, you will begin to see or have a little bit more clarity of what the Bible is trying to say here in Hebrews chapter 2. Then we now discuss. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 2 in the Good News translation from verse 1. That is why we must hold on to all the more firmly to the truths we have heard, so that we will not be carried away. The message given to our ancestors by the angels was shown to be true, and those who did not follow it or obey it received the punishment they deserved. How then shall we escape if we pay no attention to such a great salvation? The Lord himself first announced this salvation, and those who heard him proved to us that it is true. At the same time, God added his witness to theirs by performing all kinds of miracles and wonders and by distributing the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. God has not placed the angels as rulers over the new world to come, the world of which we speak. Instead, as it is said somewhere in the scriptures, what are human beings, O God, that you should think of them? Mere human beings, that you should care for them. You made them for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and made them rulers over all things. It says that God made them rulers over all things. This clearly includes everything. We do not, however, see human beings ruling over all things now. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, so that through God's grace he should die for everyone. We see him now crowned with glory and honor because of the death he suffered. It was only right that God, who creates and preserves all things, should make Jesus perfect through suffering in order to bring many children to share his glory. For Jesus is the one who leads them to salvation. He purifies people from their sins, and both he and those who are made pure all have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his family. He says to God, I will tell my people what you have done. I will praise you in their meeting. He also says, I will put my trust in God. And he also says, here I am with the children that God has given me. Since the children, as he calls them, are people of flesh and blood, Jesus himself became like them and shared their human nature. He did this so that through his death, he might destroy the devil who has the power over death, who had the power over death. And in this way, set free those who were slaves all their lives because of their fear of death. For it is clear that it is not the angels that he helps. Instead, he helps the descendants of Abraham. This means that he had he, that he had to become like his people in every way, 
in order to be their faithful and merciful high priest in his service to God, so that the people's sins will be forgiven. And now he can help those who are tempted because he himself was tempted and suffered. Praise be the name of the Lord and the reading of his word. Amen. Now, one thing that is so interesting as I was studying the scripture, and it is really probably one of the things that prompted me to say, let's look at the scripture tonight, is the fact that at every point in time, it's important we remember who we are, our identity. So what Hebrews is trying to say is that we human beings, especially we human beings that are born-again Christians, that have the very life of God in us, we are of a different class compared to every other creation. We are of an exalted class compared to every other creation. Anytime you want to understand who you are, look at the model. So see how God did it. And this thing is so instructive. I just hope that we can all catch it tonight. God did a master stroke here. God created human being. If you notice, there is this, the, 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 what is being discussed in this scripture is still tying to God's original plan when he created human beings for them to have dominion and to rule and to function like him. So God gave birth as it were or god created us as it were in his exact image and after that creation was done he gave us full authority over every other thing that he created all the works of his hand this thing is a fundamental information and knowledge that we must have because what that is saying it's telling us see who you are you have been created to be in charge. You have been created to rule. So God, the way God does things, he creates the end from the beginning. So he perfects the thing. After perfecting the thing, he now comes to the beginning and allows that thing to play out. So whenever you're feeling like things are going in a strange way, look again at the picture of who you are. And what God did here, because let's just read it and I'll, I'll, I will explain further. When you look at what was said here from verse 5, it says, God has not placed the angels. I'm reading the Good News translation again. God has not placed the angels as rulers over the new world to come, the world of which we speak. Then verse 6, it says, instead, as it is said somewhere in the scripture, what are human beings, O oh God, that you should think of them? This is the master stroke question. Angels were asking, what is so special about us, Lord, that you should think about us? You know, you can have a servant that is very big and very strong and very muscular, but you're very small. That servant, not because of your muscles or your looks, but because of who you are in the eyes of the master, will serve you and will protect you and will do all that they are supposed to do on your behalf. It's just the same way it is with us. Because angels, the Bible says that angels excel in strength. So these angels are powerful beings. They are immortal beings. They don't die. They can transit between the supernatural world and the natural world at ease. They can take different forms. They can take animal forms. They can take human forms. And then they can shift again into their spiritual form. So they have a level of invincibility if you look at it like that. So they are looking at human beings the way we are, normal us, ordinary us. And they're asking God, why are these people so special to you? And then they now say, you made them a little lower than the angels. The Hebrew translation of this says, you made them a little lower than God, than Elohim. Then you now crown them with glory and honor. And then made them ruler over all things. It says that God made them rulers over all things. This clearly includes everything. 
But the mystery here is that we don't yet see human beings ruling over all things now. But we see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, so that through God's grace he should die for everyone. See what God did there as a master stroke. He made human beings to have dominion. But when Adam fell, he had to introduce Jesus Christ as number one, the sacrifice for sin, and then number two, the prototype of who man is. Because after man fell, so many years passed before Jesus came on the scene. So human beings did not even have an understanding that they were supposed to rule. They didn't even have an understanding that they were created to be in charge. They didn't have the understanding that we have authority over demons, over all creation. If you look at Genesis, Genesis says that everything, you know, there's a way the Genesis, Genesis says this. It says, um, and let them have dominion over the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, the beasts of the, uh, the earth, and everything that creepeth upon the earth and everything that moveth underneath the waters and then over all the earth. Now, our pastor explain this he said that when he's talking about everything that creepeth it upon the earth animals are included as well as demonic forces and spiritual forces because you will notice that in the bible um scorpions and serpents are used as references to demonic forces and these scorpions and serpents are creeping things and then when he talks about things that are inside the waters, he talks about the marine spirits and all that. Everything that is in this domain called earth, visible or invisible, is put under our control. We have dominion over it by God's original design. So when God did this, because Adam fell, Adam was the original person that showed exactly what it was like to be in dominion. Because he was ruling over the earth for seven years before he fell. So when so many years, thousands of years passed, human beings were all being messed up. Some human beings were being eaten by animals. A lot of things were going wrong until Christ came. God sent Christ, like I said, number one, to first of all, die for the sins of man, pay for the sins of man in order to redeem humanity back again to the full stature of the original Adam. And then, number two, show us how to function in dominion. So anytime you're wondering how your life is going, look at Jesus Christ. He is the exact model of who you are. God didn't send Jesus Christ for the sake of him being Jesus Christ, whom we all love and whom we worship and whom he adore. God made him like a human being so that he can suffer and pay the price for humanity, to restore humanity, which is God's children, back to the status of God's. And then secondly, God sent him as an example of how we should operate. So whenever I think about myself, sometimes I'm wondering, how are things going? What is all this? What's happening? I just look at Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my mirror image. Jesus Christ is your mirror image. Christ was created for you to be like Christ. God designed for every one of us to be conformed to that same image in functionality and in likeness, meaning in character and in ability. So you, whatever you see Jesus Christ do, you are supposed to be doing it. That was why God made him human. Everything you, wherever Jesus goes, he, 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 he heals the sick. You should be able to heal the sick. Wherever Jesus goes, he sees the dead. He raises the dead. You should be, we should be able to raise the dead. Jesus Christ multiplied five loaves and four fishes and, and five loaves and two fishes, sorry, and thousands of people ate and they were full. We should be able to also do that multiplication. In fact, in these times, I'm telling myself, Lord, because I know that there's an extra level of grace that God has released for the end times. I'm trusting God that these levels of grace will rest on us, whereby when the, maybe the Antichrist system has come and there's challenge when it comes to buying food and stuff like that, 
miracles will be able to be replicated. Multiplication miracles will be able to be replicated. All sorts of things will be able to happen. I was listening to a man of God today. I was talking about they, he was in a prayer meeting with a group of people praying. And one of, one of the men there, one of the men that were praying, didn't know that he was close to a wall. He was just praying and passed through the wall. And his eyes were closed, passed through the wall, continued praying, came back again. You know, when you're praying, you're walking to and fro, to and fro. So he passed through the wall, dematerialized, passed through the wall, returned back again. Passed through again, returned back again. And then people suddenly, so a few people noticed and stopped praying and were watching him. And he was still praying, passed through the wall, returned back again. And when he noticed that the prayers had kind of slowed down and he opened his eyes, everybody was watching him. And he asked what was happening. And they told him, you were just beside this wall. You passed through it and returned. He said, it's a lie. Try to pass through, nothing happened. Try to hit the, <laughs> hit the wall again, nothing happened. So the pastor was trying to say that, these gifts of the Holy Spirit are being released now. It's not something that you're that, that we will have to be fitting out. It's not something that we will have to be praying and fasting for. They are already released and they will be operating at will. All sorts of things will be operating. So we are going to begin to see the dimensions that God wants us to function in in this time. Our minds need to open to it. That's why we are bringing the scriptural study tonight. So let us know that whatever it is, is your operation, operating environment as at now. If it is not matching up to the model, Jesus Christ, we need to still trust God to step up higher. Is it not a scripture that says, as he is, so are we in this world? Isn't it another scripture in Romans that said God predestined us to be conformed unto the image of Christ, the firstborn, so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We are designed to conform into that image. So God wanted every one of us, all of us that are born again Christians, to begin to have a clear consciousness of who we truly are. Any day you look in the mirror, Christ is your mirror image. Christ is your mirror image. You can lay hands, the sick recover. You can rebuke a, a, a devil, the devil disappears. You can have a word of wisdom functioning naturally. You can create things that were not there. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm trying to say, really, I'm trying to say, because, you know, over this period, we've been talking about the power of your imagination. How as a man thinketh, so is he. I'm now bringing another dimension to it because it's still in the same vein of beholding it is what you behold continuously that you begin to reproduce in your life or you begin to manifest in your person so when we behold the image of christ that's why studying the bible is non-negotiable you're studying who you are when you look at how christ functioned who he is his nature his character and his abilities you're actually reading a story about yourself That is what this scripture is trying to tell us tonight. And there are many more scriptures that are also like this, referencing the same thing. God designed you to be like Christ. In holiness, in compassion, in determination, in anointing, in grace, in humility, in power, in wisdom, in riches, in honor in glory and in blessing. I rest my case for a moment and let the floor open. You will also notice that this very scripture in Hebrews chapter 2 was referenced in the Old Testament in Psalm chapter 8. Angels were asking, what is so special about human beings? You and I are very special in God's eyes. And when God looks at you and I, he sees Jesus. We now need to begin to look at ourselves as Jesus Christ. And that is one thing that many of us have not been able to achieve. You need to begin to look. Anytime you read the Bible, sometimes you can take Mark. Mark, the, 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 the book of Mark is one of the short, I think about the shortest gospel, the, the gospels among the gospels about the shortest because it's, is an action-oriented gospel. As soon as Mark starts, Jesus was just healing the sick and all that. You want to see things like certain dimensions of functionality. Just study the book of Mark. And anything you're seeing there, know you're studying yourself. One of my pastors those days, 
told me that whenever he wants to go for a crusade or whenever he has a night of glory or he has to minister healing and power and anointing, he just takes the book of Mark and starts reading. And then he will be listening to um, um, some worship music, that maybe Benny Hinn's worship music. And then he takes the book of Mark and starts reading. So he said, he said he, when he does all the running around, you know, we're organizing camp meeting and all that, he will do all the running around. And then he has to preach night of glory. In order to get his mind back in the miraculous, he will take the book of Mark, start reading it and be listening to worship music. What is that? That thing is, uh, it, it, it comes from a place of understanding that as he is, as Christ is, so are you. If Christ could do it, so can you. That's why our pastor always says something. He says, anytime you're confused about what to do in a situation, imagine in your head, if Jesus Christ were here, what will he do? If you can think out what he will do, you yourself do it. The same grace that was on Christ has been reposited in you because Christ is our model. If you do it, you get the same results. Now, there are degrees of growing into. Because many of these things, you start it now, you may not see some kind of results, mainly because you've not grown into it by practice. But the more you do it and the more you have that mindset, the more you have that meditation that really God created you to be like Christ. And the more you start thinking about who is Christ. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 that Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creation. All things, all, all things were made by him and for him and in him. Do all things consist? It now says, whether those things are visible or invisible, whether they are thrones or dominions or principalities hi, and powers. Whenever I read that scripture, something happens to me. I, I, it's, maybe I should just read it out. I, when, when you read, you know, because I, I, I need us to understand why we're looking at this scripture tonight. There's a way you can read about Jesus Christ and you reference him to God. And you're amazed at his um, at his godhood. You're, you're, he is God. So you're ascribing God status to him and quietly remove yourself from the narrative. But really, Christ is God. But the Bible says here in these Hebrews, he did not take the form of angels. Why did he have to come as a human being? Because he is God. He could have taken any form. But he came as a human being because he identifies as us so that we can identify as him. So he did all that process, coming as a human being, living as a human being. Please later, just study this, this Hebrews 2 in different translation. He came as a human being, lived as a human being, died human, God died human. And then resurrected. What was he trying to do? He was doing all this to bring us human beings to the realization of who we are. That it is him that is our representation. He is our model. He is our image. Because we are all the children of God. So let's look at that Colossians again. I just want to just quickly read it. Colossians chapter 1. It goes to verse um verse Let's start from verse 12. He says, giving thanks unto the Father who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now see the image of Christ, the image of Christ. And as you're seeing this image of Christ, that's who you are. Remember, we are all part of his body. We are, all, we are the same as he is. Just different expressions and different, um, different dimensions of growth and maturity and understanding. But as he is, so are we. The Bible says in verse 13, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Then see verse 15, talking about Christ who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. 
and he is before all things, and by him all things consist, and he is the head of the body. That's where we now come in. The church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your own mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So the whole story is God is trying to restore back the image of his son in us. God is trying to restore back his image in us. He created us to be gods on earth. But the moment Adam fell, we forgot all that and we entered bondage. When Jesus Christ now came and paid the price for that, the image restoration process now became the second thing that Christ was now doing for those three years of ministry before he left to heaven. And then the 40 days afterwards when he resurrected, trying to say, this is how you should be. This is who you are. This is what you can do. These are your functionalities. So if we tie this Hebrews chapter 2, with what we've been discussing about the fact that the more you behold the glory, that's what you see in Corinthians, as we behold that glory as in a glass, we get transformed. We get transformed into the same image we behold. Let us now, because we, we, we've been discussing beholding your blessing, beholding your prosperity, beholding all the good things that Christ has done for us. We should also have in that picture, beholding who Christ is. Because as we are beholding who Christ is in all his ability and his functionality, we are beholding ourselves and are being transformed. If he can do it, you can. If he is it, you are. Because whatever he is, let me get that scripture. I just read that scripture and I stop. As he is, so are ye in this world. It is a scripture that requires reading. As he is, so are we in this world. Let me get that scripture. I think it's in John. Okay, it's in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. You could look at your Bible. The, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, it says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. What is this saying? As Jesus Christ is now glorified in heaven, fully coronated as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That same image is who we are on earth. So we are kings as well on earth to rule on earth like he rules in heaven. That's what he's saying. As he is, not even as he was when he, walks, when he walked the street of Galilee. He's talking about as he is now, after he's paid the price of death and resurrection. And after he's been coronated as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that same image is who we are because that's the reason why God brought Christ as a human being for us to see the model and attain and aspire towards being like that model in functionality and in character. I rest my case for now and I, I open the floor. <laughs> If you have any questions, you have any further insights, please unmute yourself and let us share. There are deep revelations that must sink in. Never read scripture on the surface. These revelations must sink. If there's nothing else you heard this night, this very scripture, as Jesus Christ is, that's how you are. You are the way, Holy Spirit, help me. The way Jesus is the express image of God the Father, you and I are his ex, we are supposed to be his express image here on earth. That was what God planned originally. 
That was the ultimate plan, that we should all be what? Conformed into the image of his son. All of us to be like Christ. This is the only kingdom that we have everybody a king. And then Jesus Christ, the king of kings. There are no slaves among us citizens. This is the only kingdom that Christ functioned like that. Conformed into the image of Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 said it. He says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. I'm trying to get you to see the mindset of what God is doing and what God had in mind. God did not have in mind that we should struggle and suffer. He had in mind that as Jesus Christ functions, that's how we should function. Somebody came out and saw Jesus Christ and Peter, tax collector, and was asking for why you people are not paying your tax. And Jesus Christ said something. Hmm. Let's not offend them. Peter, go and cast your hook in the sea. Open the mouth of that fish. Bring out a gold coin. Pay for my tax. Pay for his own. Pay for your own. That gold coin was created at the word of Christ. That tells me that we, need to, we, we are destined to be functioning in dimensions where finances is not an issue. But you know, these things will not happen until you first of all understand it and start brooding on it and start meditating on it. Because that's what the scripture said. As you keep on beholding that image, you get transformed into the same thing you're beholding. As we are beholding and trusting God for our blessings and our abundance, let's go to the original authentic beholding of the very image of Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who is our image as well. Who is our model? Let's keep on beholding Christ. And as you're beholding him, something will happen to you. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm communicating this well. I will tell you another story and I stop. Do you know that many, many men of God, many of them, sometimes when they want to also do crusades or function in healing, they go and play tapes of healing ministers. They just play the tapes. Play tapes of crusades. Benny Hinn, um, 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 there are a lot of them. Benny, Benny Hinn, Ora Roberts. Um, uh, I've forgotten this man's name. A couple of these healing ministers that have the authentic article. Sometimes, Kenny Hagen, a couple of them. They just start playing it. And as they are playing it and they are watching it, the spirit in those healing crusades starts entering them. And they go out and replicate the same thing. Pastor once said it, that when he wanted to start doing crusades in the stadium, he took all the tapes of um, Bishop Benson and Hossa and some other healing ministers and went on a retreat. No phone, no TV, no noise, just him and the tapes, him and the tapes. All he was doing was just watching that, watching that, beholding it, beholding it, beholding it. As he beheld it, by the time he came back after a month, he just went to a stadium, opened his mouth, and things started happening. It is just for us to attain to who we are. That's all I'm doing with all this teaching. To, to start coveting, to attain to who we are, and stop looking at ourselves as limited. Look at ourselves as the original image of what God created, and begin to aspire towards it. And that original image can be seen in Christ. Okay, so I stop for now and the floor is open. Any person who wants to make an input or wants to ask a question, you can unmute yourself and share. You want to make an input, you want to share, you want to make some, you want to ask a question, you want to um, share something that came to you while we were sharing the word. Unmute yourself and please share and bless us with that insight. Okay. 
this is a discovery bible study i don't need to be the one that is um that is the one i don't want i don't need to be the one that is that's only talking so somebody should unmute and share ayodele david good evening good evening sir yep praise god hallelujah uh, i want to uh, just say a few things that i saw in the course of the teaching okay. first i want to say i i believe god and i trust him to continue to bless you amen. and to give you more revelations every other time amen. in jesus name amen. these are amen. these are powerful revelations and sincerely it is it is really meeting us at the point of need for this period and i Trust God that He will continue to do more and more of this through you in Jesus' name. Amen. That, that scripture that we are reading, this Hebrews in chapter 2, mm. uh, the verse 8 says, this particular translation that is still on the on the screen, okay. it says, and, and made them rulers over all things. It says that God made them rulers over all things. This clearly includes everything. We do not, however, see human beings ruling over all things now. We do not, however, see human beings ruling over all things now. Yeah. And this scripture used the word human beings. Now, I see that it tries to first generalize the situation. We mm. can look around and see that the whole world when we look at it in the natural sense, the whole world is not functioning in the light of the glory that God expects it to be as of what, as of the image or, or, or what he conceived in his mind in the beginning. So if we just look generally, which is the perspective through which everybody is looking, and the Bible is not saying that we are wrong. That perspective is right. That mm -hmm. is the situation that is, it is when we see in the fish, in the we just look at it with our physical eyes. The whole world is going away, everything is going, and it's not even looking as if it's coming back to the scripture. It's not looking as if it's coming back to what the the to what God wants. But verse 9 says, But we do see Jesus. Mm. Now, this place is now calling back our attention that after we have looked at it, and to us, it's like it is not returning back to is not coming closer to what god is expecting now the scripture is telling us that there is there is now a certain people that cannot look the way everybody is looking mm. there is a set there mm. is a called out that mm. cannot now look yes everybody is allowed to look Everybody is allowed to see it like that. Now, the Bible in the book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 5 and verse 17 says, if any man is in Christ, mm. he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Then he puts a word. He said, behold. Mm. Now, these people that are in Christ who have become new creature, for who all things are passed away, now they have a looking, they have mm. a beholding now that they must behold. They now have a place they must concentrate their attention. They now have a place mm. they must that their focus must be shifted to. Mm. Yes, everybody is looking, but now in Christ Jesus, there is a shift in focus, there is a shift in direction. Now, when we it says, but we do see Jesus, mm. who for a little while was made lower than the angels. So that through God's grace, he should die for everyone. Now, the verse 10 says, it was only right for God who creates and, and preserves all things to make Jesus perfect through suffering in order to bring many children mm. to share his glory. His glory. Now, yeah. in this world, in this world, the Bible says we will, uh, we will, they, they, we will have tribulations, we will go through some challenges but for those who are in christ Jesus, the essence of those things we are going through is for our focus to be shifted mm. is is it's like a, we are it's like a, a an iron that is going through the melting 
extracting process with the blacksmith, mm -hmm. if we continue to heat that iron, God wants to achieve something. And so the things we are, face, we are facing, the challenges that comes to us, all those things, the essence of those things is like God hitting us towards a direction, hitting us to a particular area where we look on to Jesus, where we behold the person of Jesus and we, we realize the person that we are. That's mm. why that second Corinthians in chapter 3, verse 18, is saying as we behold in the mm. mirror, we are mm. transformed by that self-same image, we are, we are translated into a greater glory because we are looking at him. We are no longer looking the way the whole world is looking. So until we come into that realization and to come into that realization, we will go through the challenges we are going through now. Uh, but the, 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 it, the, it, is not on, it is not only enough to go through the challenges. It is sufficient to, while going through the challenges, to understand the essence that the purpose of going through it must be understood, then we will be able to get the benefit that the essence of it is for us to shift our focus to Jesus so that we can become who we are. Because many people will think, okay, yes, you say I will become like Jesus, but what about all these things that we are? What about we are not living above the situation of this world? Yes, because we are looking after the way the world is looking. The what God is saying is we look unto Jesus. What is happening? To, what is happening to Jesus? What is uh, the person of Jesus? What does he signify? What does he identify? How does this image relate to me? And as we continue to do that, that scripture says we are changed gradually. Mm. We are changed gradually to become that same image. And when you were talking, I was looking at uh, we will give birth to a, a baby. And mm. you see the parent, they will spend all their resources on that baby. Now, somebody can question that this is just a very, a very tiny child, human being, mm. you know, but there is, there is an image, there is, a, there is a person, there is a future that the parents are seeing in their mind, that they, they are seeing the child, oh, this is tomorrow's president, this is tomorrow's leader, this is mm. tomorrow this. And because of that, they channel all resources to raise that child because there is a focus. There is something they are seeing in that child. Now, the same thing is what God is doing to us. God sees us beyond what we are seeing. That child is ignorant, actually, and, but the parents, they are seeing something. That mm. they, they, have, they have seen every other children. They have seen every other people who have grown. They give birth to them like they give birth to their own child, and they have grown to become something. So they have an understanding that this child also can become something. So the Bible is saying now we look at Jesus, who actually was raised like a baby, from like we were we, we are we are raised, he was raised like a baby, you know, from parents who probably supposed to were not influential in their own time. But as he continues to grow, what he did become. Then we look at ourselves and we understand that this is the pathway to go. This is the pathway to go. We also, we can become like this. And that is who we are. That is who we are. And we are going to uh, actually show forth that glory. But the point is seeing Jesus. We must continue to see him. Like here, yeah, Hebrews 12 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author, the author and, and the finisher of our deliverance. Praise God. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much. I pray once so again, much. God bless you. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. It is so powerful. In fact, as you were talking, let's look at this verse 8 again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You really did a, a, a powerful exposition. Look at that verse 8 again. You know, it says that God made them rulers over all things. This clearly includes everything. It now says we do not, however, see human beings ruling over all things but we do see jesus now watch originally god created human beings to rule over all things when adam fell the only people now that can rule over all things by divine right are those who came through christ that's what he's saying that's what the scripture is saying so after adam's fall the whole world came into sin any other person that was a descendant of adam came from a place, a mode of sin. But the only person that breached that, stopped that, and created a different route of righteousness that can take us into heaven 
and then can bring us back into the class of gods was Jesus Christ. That's why that very line of scripture said, we are not yet seeing human beings ruling over all things now, but we are seeing the new Adam, the new model, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ became now the pioneer of that new dispensation, that rulership dispensation, that thing that returns us back to what Adam originally had as ruler of all things before he fell. That's why when people argue about Christianity or any other religion, it's not an argument. These are spiritual. In fact, let's remove the name Christianity because that name Christianity is even a religious thing. What we actually are are followers of Christ. Children of God. And the one that made us children of God is Christ. The name Christian was even given by other people in Acts of the, I think in Corinth or Acts of the Apostles. So they were using it to refer to see them, their followers of Christ. So they were now called Christians. And now it has become a religion and people are doing making all sorts of stuff about it. But that's not that's not even the discussion. The point I'm trying to make is that Jesus is the model. If a person now, even if he answers a Muslim, follows Jesus Christ, believes in Christ, gives his or her life to Christ, studies the Bible, but is still wearing all that hijab and all that, that person is as good a born-again Christian as any other person. The key is following Christ. And Christ is the model. That's why the only way, Jesus Christ himself said it, I am the only way, the truth, and the life. You can't get any other dominion over creation except through me. You can't get access to heaven, to the, to the Father, except through me. I'm the gate. Because every other person that came from Adam is already flawed by sin, the mode of sin. Jesus Christ is the one that paid the price for sin. No other religion can say it. No other spiritual authority can say it except Christ. And even if you look at it, if you study it, all religious sects and bodies that are major reference Christ. All of them, even in the Quran, Christ is referenced as Isa. And he's revered as the greatest prophet. And he's also mentioned as, a, as immaculately conceived. You just need to read your Quran. If you go to, anyway, let me, I'm not talking about Quran, but I've read some portion of it. I read, I think it's Miriam chapter 18 and 19 that talked about the immaculate conception of Christ. So there's no argument about who is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. There's no argument about who is the head of all principality and power. The argument is in the head of some human beings, but the whole spiritual realm knows. We also, we know. And we see his authority and his power at work when we call his name. But the key here is, just like you were saying it, the whole earth is going haywire. Human beings are confused. The only gate to come out of that confusion and to enter back into the ruling class is through Christ. Because he was the model. He was the sacrifice. And he's the example. We, <laughs> that sometimes you see Christianity beyond talk. You see, you, you, you just understand that this thing we are calling Christianity is actually the power of the most high God. Finding expression through human beings. You don't get it any other place. So just like you said, we need to keep beholding this thing so that it enters. So that we become all walking Jesuses everywhere we go. Rooting out evil anywhere we see it and establishing the kingdom of God. Anytime that you go somewhere, and this is something I also mentally do and understand. Anywhere I appear, the kingdom of God has come. It's simple. And I'm not saying it because if every one of you, as far as you're carrying God inside of you, because the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God in functionality, anywhere you go, the kingdom of God has appeared. Have that understanding. It's an understanding. If you have it in your mind, you will now start seeing it operating in your life. But if you're thinking about yourself as this little me, this struggling me, this UAE is doing me this, this country is doing me that, what's happening in the world, you will miss your true identity. Anywhere you go, Christ is there because he's in you. So you travel with the Holy Spirit. 
The issue, are you going to allow him to be revealed? I remember one of our pastors those days. He says that anytime he enters a compound and there is a dog, that dog will be calm. He says he knows what to do. I said, excuse me, sir. What do you mean by you know what to do? He said that once he enters a compound and the dog is barking and barking, he will just look at the dog. And he said he will allow the one inside of him to look at the dog through his eyes. And that dog has to respect the creator inside of him, the Holy Spirit, and bow. It, this thing is not a special anointing or grace. It's just a knowing that unlocks the manifestation. That's why we keep beholding. As we are beholding that same image, that knowing is coming. And as that knowing is coming, the functionality starts to express itself naturally. Is it not the Bible that said in, um, I think it's Peter, it says Christ has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. So the, 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 the experience of all things that pertain to life and godliness comes through the knowledge of Christ. The more you know him, the more you understand the things that's functioning. That's why this thing, this, the, 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 you, if you look at the way um, this particular Hebrews 2 started, he says, that is just from verse 1, see how he started. He says, that is why we must hold all the more firmly to the truths we have heard. The King James Version said, we should not allow this thing sleep. He says, therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed because there's something about the human mind. You can hear it today and forget it tomorrow. You're hearing it now and it's entering. Tomorrow you hear another thing, another news comes. They say they're fighting here. They say they're doing this one here. You just let your identity sleep. So he's saying, look, you need to always keep paying attention to this truth. Less at any time we should let it sleep. Because the more we are aware of it, the more we, there are people who every day, they just have a set of scriptures that they just behold every day to tell them who they are. Colossians chapter 1 that I just read is one of them. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him all things were made, whether they are visible or invisible. Thrones, dominions, principalities. Of there are some things when you behold, and then you go to Colossians chapter 2, and it tells you, you are complete in him. Who is the head <laughs> of all principalities? Just, they're telling you that all that glorious Christ, you are inside of him. So anything that is happening to Christ is also happening to you. You behold that scripture every morning, along with other scriptures you're reading. You go out into that day. You, something is just happening inside of you because you're being transformed by that same image you're beholding. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ayodele. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who wants to share, please? Anybody else who wants to share? Okay, Pastor Ma. Okay, please. Good evening. You're welcome. <laughs> please, you can, you can share. Yeah. This, this is a very deep um, discussion that we're doing. And um, it's so deep that um, this is all about Christianity. Everything that we are saying is this is our life. You know, sir, I, it just got me thinking that um, even in our daily world, if you want to bring up a product, for example, they want to bring out a car, they want to bring out any product, they first of all bring out a model. Mm. Now, the model, what they do is all the things, they, they put the model into a test. For example, if you say car, they will make the model go through rigorous tests. To be to, to to be able to so if the model can withstand all the tests all the whatever they put the model, it means that that product is 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 supposed to be mass produced. Mm. That's mm. that's what they always mm. do. So now now Christ is not just only our savior; he is our example. Mm. He is our model. That's what God goes. So so God what God did first of all was He released the model. And told the devil, do your worst. Mm. So the devil tried, messed up, did a lot of things. And now he, 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 you know, so he now said, that's why he said, look up to Jesus. This is how you were healed. So Christ is not just our savior. So what it means is that everything that Christ has capacity to do, we have the same capacity. Because yeah. that's how we are, we are, we are designed to be. 
So meaning that, you know, Bible said, Bible said that we are created in the image. First of all, image talks about the personality of Christ, his character, his person, the divine nature. Mm. And then we are created in his likeness, in his functionality. So this, what we are discussing is not just about the functionality, it also entails the character, the divine nature of Christ. So we also have that same divine nature and we also have the functionality of Christ. So these are the things we should tell ourselves now. So what it means that I even as we're talking about um the function. Now, if there are some character flaws in us that is not seen in Christ, meaning that that thing is an antibody, that thing is not supposed yes. to be there. Anything in us that we cannot see in Christ. Hey, for example, can we see fornication in Christ? No, we can't see. That means it is not supposed to be in us. Can we see anger in Christ? It's not there. That means it's not supposed to be in us. So we sh- what we are trying to say in this study, what I'm learning, is that we should bring Christ as a model and they slay him. Everything about Christ is real Christ. Now, my question I asked one day, I said, if Christ was in UAE, will he be in a hardship? Mm. So he gave us an example where he was asked to pay tax. He told Peter, just go, there is a fish there. He, he told me that Christ was living in abundance even mm. while he was on earth. He was living in abundance, you know? So so what, what we're trying to say is that certain things, we give excuses to ourselves, give excuses to the devil. As the devil is messing up with us, we give excuses, you know, we are just human. No, no, we are not just human, we are superhuman. If we understand what we are learning today, so if Christ can come on earth and become superhuman, somebody that was just, there was no boat, he needed to travel and he walked on waters. It was natural for him to do that. And now to show us that it's not just Christ that can do it, Peter said, guy, can I come? He said, come. Peter started walking without thinking. It means there are certain abilities that we have that we are not harnessing. We should go back and we are more than this. That's what he's trying to show me. Now, now another thing I want to say is that there is also a way Christ a model of parandi. There's a way he was operating. If you check early in the morning, he has woken up very early to stay with the father. Certain times you go and stay throughout the night with the father and come out and do certain things. So if we want to get Christ resolved, we also have to pay the price. That Christ... So there are some prizes. You know, I'm not talking about going to the cross. There are certain, there, is a, there are habits of Christ. Yeah, habits. We should take everything about him so that we can become like him. So my, my, what I'm saying is that we need to go and study Christ because that's our model. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. That, that, this is just the summary of the whole thing because, you know, you know, I don't know, but I don't, I don't know if it happens to you. But anytime I open my Bible and read the thing, I don't know. There's just something in that Bible. That there's something in it. There's sometimes, I, like this morning, I was reading about Elisha. And I saw some miracles in Elisha's life. Elisha multiplied food and fed a hundred people. Same multiplication, anointing, and grace functioned with Jesus Christ. While, like you said, Pastor Ma, Jesus was walking on water. There was also another technology of dividing the water. Elijah divided water. Elisha divided water. Moses divided water. Jesus decided not to stress himself and walked on top of it. This is These are human beings, <laughs> like you and <laughs> The Bible said Elijah, Elijah was a man of like passions. What is he saying? Normal human being. But these functionalities, just like you said, they, they are functionalities that are available to us we have not yet harnessed. The model called Jesus Christ is a loaded package. We also, that are the mold that come from Christ, we are also loaded packages, but we need to start stretching our capacity to begin to express the full dimensions of what is inside of us. You know, you can have a phone and the only thing you do with that phone is put on the touchlight and look for your pen under the bed. Another person will take the phone, make a call, And that's it. Another person will take the phone, send the text message, and that's it. Another person will have the phone, make a call, send a text message, go on the internet, browse, play games on the phone. Same phone 
all those functionalities inside. But the one you express is the one that you focus on or the one you allow yourself to brood on enough for it to be finding expression through your life. And one, one very powerful way to allow that find expression in your life is by studying the word of God and prayer. The study of the word is the study of who Christ is because Christ is the word. Then prayer is unlocking the Holy Spirit who unlocks the code in the word. So if you don't know anything else, take any scriptures about Christ and just study. Study and think about it. Study, study when he multiplied bread. Study how he walked on water. You know, Pastor Ma, you talked about um, following the same habits and others. Study how he prayed after he did the crusade. Because the, the, the Bible said that after he, he fed the 1,000, he fed the multitude and he healed them, that he went apart up on the mountain to pray. And he prayed for a lengthy time. And then he came back to the disciples walking on water. Follow that same pattern. If you pray to a particular, as I told you about a man of God that was talking about somebody in his congregation in a prayer meeting, they had prayed so much. The guy had prayed himself into a frequency of vibration that he would pass through all and come back, pass through all and come back. These are not mysteries, though. These are not mysteries. These are things that will start being a normal operating environment. After all, was it not Philip that was somewhere? Suddenly he appeared beside the Utopian eunuch preached to the utopian eunuch, did baptism for him, and disappeared. Ma dematerializing and materializing somewhere else is going to be happening normal. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's not a theory or anything. It's going to be... Uh... Do you know that occultic people, native doctors, do, this, do some of these things? There was one, native, one guy that was telling me about a native doctor. He said that there's a particular tree inside a forest that when they tap the tree three times... They disappear into the tree and appear in another city. So that that particular tree is like, a, is like a train route to another city. So they know these elementary and rudimentary things. We, we know the higher class or we have access to the higher class, but we don't use it. Because these elementary things are elementary functionalities of the earth. But we are rulers of the earth. That's why when people go to native doctors and they tell them, bring this one and bring that one and bring that one, they are operating on elementary rudiments of the earth. Paul called them rudiments of the earth. Those are rudimentary things, but they make us to be like, wow, because we don't have an idea that we are actually on a higher class that rules the rudiments. So if a native doctor wants to concord something, I'll just shut down the spirit he's functioning with and command that thing he's concocting not to work. It won't work. It's when you have an understanding that you're functioning from the king of kings and the lord of lords. You're functioning from the throne. So early rudiments are on a small level for you. Just like when you see an ant, an ant carries a piece of sugar and is going somewhere or a piece of bread and is going somewhere, and you are amazed that this ant can carry bread. You forget that you're a human being that can just step on this ant and is dead. Why did I go there? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Please, any other person? Any other person, please? Um, We have just about seven more minutes, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, are you Yes, sir. You're yes, muted sir. Yourself. Just briefly, sir. Okay. Okay, yes, yes. I, I, uh, while Pastor Emma was talking, I just uh, noted something while you were talking again. Uh, in uh, uh, sometimes people say, uh, why are we going through all these things? Why is a uh, Christianity like this? In, in fact, sometimes it came to my head one time, and I was, saying, why do we have to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray before things happen? And then we see people that are of the world, they just put one or two together and, you know, uh, they just get some uh, spiritual things done because uh, probably they, are, they already know what, what and what to do. Now, this Hebrews in chapter 2, the verse 2 of it says, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Hebrews 2, 3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? This verse 3 that is saying, How shall we escape? He's not talking to Christians. He's talking to the old world. 
Mm. How shall anybody mm. escape? It's not referring to Christians. It's mm. talking to the old house. Anybody escape if they neglect it. Because we will not say a Christian neglected it. If you are, mm. what makes you, well, let me say a child of God, what makes you a child of God is that you have accepted Jesus. Yeah. You have believed in me. Yeah. So if any other person has rejected it, how shall the person escape? Now, somebody will look at it and say, yeah, God is threatening us. He's coercing us to do his bidding. No, it's not a threat. Mm. And it's not a coercion. It is God is just making us to see the state that we are falling into. Mm. We are falling into a state whereby we cannot escape the consequences of the things that follow. Those things are they, they are not as they are not things that God created to put us into that punishment. But mm. the state we fell into is a state that carried those punishments. We yeah. fell into that state, and those consequences just follow like that. Now, how does a person who is now a Christian, how does the person take advantage not to suffer likewise? Because what the Bible is saying here now is, if anybody, now you are even become a Christian, and yet you are not following the principles, you are not following mm. the rules, you are living just like anybody, you will suffer what just anybody will suffer. You will exactly. go through what just anybody will go through. So there is, a, there, is, there is a pathway for solution. That's why the Bible is bringing to us that those that lived like any other person, they suffer the consequences. So for us to, to enjoy this new path that God is showing to us, then we have to do everything it takes. And that is, uh, uh, Brahma was saying, Jesus prayed. We should pray. Exactly. He studied. We should study. Jesus listened to the Holy Spirit. We should listen to the Holy Spirit. He said, as I see my father walk, so do I. We should follow God's pattern. We should do it the way it should be. There is no shortcut. Yeah. There is nothing that we just fall without us doing the necessary things we are supposed to do. Everything that the Bible says he has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. But how do those things, how do they materialize? We use our faith to bring them into our reality. And we act, the Bible says, faith without work. As we apply the faith to transfer those things, we put in the work. Yeah. And it is that work that even shows that, that our faith exists. Because if you don't have faith, we, there is no need doing the work. We say nothing is going to happen. But if we have the faith that it is going to work, then we put in the action. Yeah. It is the faith that a man has that a dead can be. Can, can rise up back to life that makes the man to say, I command you in the name of Jesus. That is yes. the action. If he does not have any faith, he will not bother to say, I command you to rise. So when we have the faith, we should put in the work. And not say, I'm just a Christian and we just expect bread to fall from heaven. And we just expect things to know. If there is anybody we need to talk to, approach the person in the name of Jesus and talk to the person. Mm -hmm. If there is any, anything you need to lay hands on, approach that thing and lay hands on it in the name of Jesus. If there's anything we need to do, let us be responsible Christians. When we behold Jesus, how, does, how did Jesus live? He lived responsibly. He attended to his parents even. So mm -hmm. let's do all the parts that concerns us as, far, as the scripture says, because if we don't do, we will suffer the consequences just like every other person who has not come into, into the fold. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. That's why we are studying these things. And please, beyond, like everyone is saying, beyond what we do in these meetings, after these meetings, take time on your own, study the scriptures as well. God will also talk to you further, specific to your situation. The, the, there is nothing that is our limit except ourselves. The Bible said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There is, there is no, anything you see in the Bible is available to us. It's just for us to grow into it. In Galatians chapter four, it says, an heir, even though he owns everything, still has to subject himself to tutors and governors until the appointed time. Our growth determines our manifestation. Our growth determines the way our faith can pull our blessings. So when some things are not happening, and some things are not coming like they should. We should think more about, have we learned the principles and are we operating it? Have we grown? 
are we grown in the functionality we have with the Holy Spirit? How do we walk with God as pertaining to our lives? Not God, where are you? No, but you, where are you with God? That's the question. So we've gotten to our time, 10.30, and I'll have to stop here. Please, I want to say a special thank you to everyone that contributed, Ayodele and Pastima, and special thanks to all of you here also that stayed up until this moment. I pray and sincerely that as the Holy Spirit is opening these things more and more, that he's writing it in the fleshy parts of our heart so that we don't let it sleep, we don't forget. And at some point, we will be walking epistles just like we have the Acts of the Apostles, we also have the Acts of you and I, written somewhere in heaven. Angels celebrating the exploits that we are doing to the glory of his name. Standing strong for Jesus Christ. Bringing the kingdom of God into manifestation wherever we are. And maybe one day, in the future, future, when we finish our race and we get to eternity, we will see the impact of all these things that we are doing. And God will give us crowns and tell us, well done, thou good and faithful servants. God bless you all and we'll see you again next week. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God Jesus and the sweet fellowship of the Holy of Spirit. God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And surely... God's goodness and peace all the days of our lives as we dwell in this house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all and see you again next week, Tuesday. Good night.